follows. Gulad Arali, Abdesis Isa, Jessica Kim, Christopher Lee, Natasha Puri, Nirupan Sivakumaran, Daniel Wisser, and Edwin Zhao. Are there any youth ambassadors or youth counselors who would like to either remove yourselves from the list, if you're already on it, or would like to be added to this list? Councillor Kim? Please, uh, just uh, 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 for a future, you always uh, stand whenever you recognize. No worries. Yes. Um, I'd like to be removed from the list. Councillor Issa? I'd also like to resign or uh, remove my list, my name from the list also. I was already in the mood that I won. Sorry, guys. If you'd like to resign, then you have to. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. Uh, is, are there any other councillors or ambassadors who'd like to add or remove themselves from this list? Okay. And so the nominations are uh, for that position are closed. Um, and so uh, the list that you will see uh, on your screens is the final list of individuals wishing to stand for the position of chair of the Youth Council. Um, each a member will have five minutes to make a presentation to Youth Council. And at uh, this time, I'd like to call on Councillor Arali to make uh, his presentation. Time started. Awesome. So how's everyone doing today? Yeah. Awesome. I feel like excited in the room. Um, so let me let me start off by saying this: there is a natural order to things, and it is not like to be disturbed. Unfortunately, the bodies that govern this system also don't like it to be disturbed. So what ends up happening is the ones who don't take part in the creation of the system, like youth, are often being neglected. From the violence that might happen with youth in underinvested communities from um, bullying that happens in our schools with adults brushing it up as kids just being kids, or institutionally with things like tuition going up more than twice inflation year over year, kids, I mean not kids, I'm sorry, youth um, have been neglected by this order and it does not want to be disturbed. From a young age, I always felt like something was wrong. I've always wanted to become president of the world or something, stop my fingers and fix it, but unfortunately it's not that easy. This order has been built upon thousands and thousands of years, and while I'm sure that everyone in this room right now is going to give 120% in the next two years with the City Youth Council, we can't just change it like that. Now, what we do might just amount to a few drops in an ocean of change that is needed, but what is any ocean but the collection of drops? So let's work together with youth from across the city to help raise that ocean of change that much higher. So with that being said, my name is Guler Oral, and I'm running for chair for the City Youth Council. So why are we here? We don't govern youth. We can't create bylaws, raise taxes. We don't have a $10 billion budget to pay with. Governance is what happens every other day of the month in this um, building. But what we do have the power to do is advocate, to be a voice for the youth in the city, but to more importantly, work towards having youth being able to represent themselves in a meaningful way. We need to have a strong voice so that policy that gets shaped the city hall works in the best interest of youth. Right now, I'm the Vice President of the Scarborough Campus Students Union at the University of Toronto Scarborough Campus. I represent close to 11,000 fully part-time students um, to different levels of government, doing exactly what I plan to do as chair, advocating to make sure decisions being made are in the best interest of the youth I represent. This past week, I was in Ottawa meeting with MPs and senators to push for a national vision for post-secondary education to ensure throughout this country we have access to an affordable, accessible, quality post-secondary education system. I also work with a lot with community groups like Respect Scarborough to advocate to the city about issues that impact the Scarborough community. I was heavily involved in engaging both students and Scarborough residents around the Shepherd LRT issue. I also pulled off two all-nighters here at City Hall making deputations about the city budget last year. On top of that, I do a lot of work to engage you because it's hard to advocate if you're not engaging the people you represent. As my role as Vice President External, I head the Scarborough Youth Cabinet. A program where youth from high schools all over Scarborough engage in leadership development and civic engagement. I also organize a lot of campaigns that engage students in my campus from campaigning to push for lower fees or equity campaigns to ensure that we have a more fair and equitable society for all. Um, doing constant outreach and involving students with campaigns is something I do on a daily basis. 
I have a strong and diverse experience in being able to connect, advocate, and represent um, the youth that rely on me. As a resident of Toronto, there's a million and one things I want to see done in this city. But as chair, it's not about what I want. The best thing that I can do in the role is work my hardest to let you folks and the youth throughout the city be able to move whatever those million and one issues that you're passionate about forward. With that being said, I will work towards a few things if I'm elected as chair. First one is organizational development. Since CYC is starting up now, we have a very unique opportunity to shape how this body works. The first thing I want to do is host a visioning event, sit down with you folks and figure out exactly what potential this group has and where we want to take it before we get to the nitty and gritty of making decisions. From sitting down with multiple um, visioning events for university projects and community groups, to totally rewriting our ballas and our student union to make it um, more accessible for students, I know this is something that's very important and I know how to make it happen. Come 2014, we need to make youth the focus. Instead of hearing about cuts, I want to see the people who run for office talk about building a city. I find it funny when council meets in, these, in this room, they talk about it and make decisions for today. But I have a feeling that when we're here, we're going to be making decisions for tomorrow. Um, we need to bridge that gap. So politicians don't just think about the next election cycle, but further, so we won't have to conduct the mistakes or unintended consequences, and unintended consequences for the decisions they make. Lastly, when we go about making decisions, we need to work with an equity framework. When we work to advocate for youth, we have to think about the bigger picture. When you fight for one form of profession, you have to fight for them all because they're all interlinked. We have to work to change the natural order of things, not just to have youth included in it. With that being said, we have a ton of work with, ahead of us, and do you know what, from the energy room, seeing all you folks, I know that we're the right crew to do it. So as chair, we'll make sure each and every one of you have what's needed. My name is Gulet Rao, and I want to disturb the natural order of things. I hope I can get your support, and thank you, and let's have an awesome two years together. These proceedings, I would say no. Okay. Um, just uh, you can just stand where you are. Uh, just yeah, and just a reminder to all uh, uh, councillors and ambassadors: uh, when you are going to speak, please stand up, activate your microphone, and then proceed to speak. Um, uh, the microphones that we have here are uh, sophisticated enough so that if you stand up and just uh, you know stand up straight and speak, that you could be heard clearly. All right, Councillor Lee. There's been a recent study that argues our generation is more likely to discuss political issues but less likely to take action. Ladies and gentlemen, we are living testimony that will prove this study dead wrong. Now, I want to thank you here for keeping the hope alive, for rejecting the labels designed to oppress our generation into mediocrity, and for finding the best in yourself and using it to craft a better tomorrow. My name is Christopher Lee, and I'm a youth ambassador here on behalf of the Toronto Multicultural Youth Council. Now, I'm not going to go on about my resume because leadership is about character. It's not about your resume. I believe in a city youth council where we can disagree without being disagreeable. I believe in a city youth council where that identifies itself with the people as opposed to acting like first class citizens. And I believe in a city youth council that speaks on behalf of those who can't speak for themselves. Thus, I believe affordable housing is one of the most pressing issues that we face because the homelessness endemic is a national embarrassment that is crippling society and needs to be addressed now. Moreover, I also oppose the casino project because the last thing Toronto needs when thousands of people have no money for a home is a place where money is essentially thrown away. Now, I stand neutral on the debate of subways versus LRTs because I do believe that both sides have some very valid points and I look forward to council having this debate in the future with reason and without the politics and cynicism that have plagued our system for so long. I will advocate for the continued funding and protection of our green spaces and our parks, as well as stricter idling policies, because while we may draw from this world, we also share it, and we're the only ones that can protect it. And my vision isn't particularly special, but for the first time in the history of the nation, young dreamers like me have a unified and democratic vessel through which we can make our dreams become a reality. United our voice will be heard. United, our voice will be strong. United, our voice will be answered, and united, our voice will change the world. United, our potential is beyond reckoning, and my plan as chair will open the door of opportunity even further, as well as feed the flames of hope that we create. Now, I plan to widen the scope of our media interaction, because as a democratic breakthrough, there is no reason why the media shouldn't be lining up for interviews right now, as well. There is also no reason why we shouldn't be writing in newspapers as well as online youth forums because it's time for us 
to exert our presence on society so that we can prove that we're not the lost generation, but rather the one that's found the right way. I envision the expansion of the City Youth Council to the cities of Vancouver and Montreal by the end of the term, because I want youth in the, in the second, in the other two largest cities of Canada to have the same opportunities we do so that we can work together to fight for a better Canada together. I pledge for committees to delegate committee volunteers to liaise and work with relevant agencies and institutions because I believe our volunteers also deserve the same opportunities we do. I condone cooperation with outside organizations because we can also learn, build, and succeed together. And I will work extensively towards intercommittee collaboration because their objectives are inextricably linked and it's only sensible to strive for a pair of common goals and coordinate a more wholesome and more powerful advocacy effort together. But it is only together that we can craft a better city because I'm gonna be frank with you, I don't have all the answers. But I have the passion that will keep council going through fire and rain and the determination that will scale a mountain. So if you feel the same passion as I do, if you feel the same determination as I do, if you feel the same urgency as I do, if you feel the same uh, hope as I do, and if you feel the same optimism as I do, then I ask for your vote as council chair for relentless leadership that will fight to the end of all things, as well as leadership that knows how to listen, not only with one ear, not only with two, but with three. Thank you. I have a question for Councillor Lee. Um, what experience can you bring to this role? Sorry, sorry, sorry Ambassador. We're, we're not taking oh, okay. questions question and answers at this time. Um, uh, thank you, Ambassador Lee. We now move to uh, the Councillor Puri. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Natasha Puri, and I think it is truly an understatement to say that I'm excited to be here. First off, I would really like to take this opportunity to thank everyone who's been working for the initiation of the CYCTO. The Board of Directors, Nazma, and everyone on the team has taken the opportunity to thank us. But if it wasn't for your own initiative, we wouldn't have the opportunity to share our voices today. So thank you for that. I'm here today as a Youth Ambassador for United Way, representing the United Way Youth Council, where we strongly believe that what unites us is far greater than what ultimately divides us. I believe I'm a strong candidate for the position of chair for three distinct reasons. My experiences, my vision, and most importantly, my qualities that make me qualify. I've been a part of over nine councils and committees, eight of which I've been a chair or president. Therefore, I know how to foster debate, facilitate strong discussion, and most importantly, recognize everyone's strengths in this room. Through these councils, I've implemented numerous programs as well as different initiatives for you. Through these experiences, I've been able to meet attracted people from all over Toronto, people with different beliefs, people with different opinions, people from all different areas. So I carry a very holistic, a very holistic, excuse me, and very diverse knowledge of our city and the people within it. This is what's going to create a strong understanding of the various aspects in Toronto, which is representative of the committees here. I don't focus on one committee. I have a broad aspect because of these experiences I have completed. Although I represent United Way, I represent more than just an organization or more than just a ward. I represent youth who are taking initiative and are committed to making a difference within their community. Thus, I'm not here to share my voice. I'm here to share the voices of all the youth in Toronto. All of us are here because we have taken initiative, and all of us are here because we're willing to make the commitment. However, what about the 310,000 youth in Toronto who believe they don't have a voice? That is our job as youth counselors and youth ambassadors to show youth in Toronto that they have a voice and at a place where we're, as youth, they can look up to us. It will be our job to represent them in the best of our abilities. And this is what the CYCTO is all about, empowering youth to be active citizens through positive health collaboration, all while implementing various events, culturally making Toronto a better city. This is ultimately what's going to lead to a better future for Toronto. Finally, I believe I have the qualities for a strong chair. I have so much enthusiasm about the CYCTO and a passion and undying commitment to this council. I'm enthusiastic about the future of this council and the work we will be doing. Finally, I embody the four values of the CYCTO. Accountability, integrity, respect, and, transpar and transparency. And I'll constantly, constantly pillarize these values in all of our meetings. As Ms. Murrow previously said this morning, 
He stated that different affiliations of youth councils will be done, especially in the United Kingdom. We need a chair that has a global experience, but is also willing to act locally, and this is what I have. I have a global perspective, which translates into local action, which is what's needed. It doesn't matter what we're doing around the world, necessarily, if we're not doing that in our own homes. As a CYCTO, we do more than represent various organizations or represent boards. We become one. We are a team here. We don't just represent the people in our work, but we represent the value of Toronto and what we want the future to become. This is our generation, and the youth in this room are the leaders of our generation who are going to create a better future. Thus, I ask for your vote, because I will represent this council to the best of my ability, externally, but also internally, while displaying incredible enthusiasm as well as professionalism. It will be the youth in this room, as I said, who will be the change, who are, the future are waiting for to create this change. John Luton stated, the task of leadership is not to put greatness into people, but to elicit it, for greatness is always there, and has already been there. I promise, if elected as chair, I will enhance this greatness, not only in this room, but among the youth across Toronto, because that is what's going to create an influential city, Youth Council Toronto, and ultimately lead to a better future. Thank you. Hey everyone, my name is Mayor Pansiva Kumara and I want to be your City Youth Council Chair just before I begin. You know what, I'm not going to sit here and read an essay that I wrote last night to you guys. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to you from one student to another. To quickly talk about myself, I'm a grade 12 student and I have a deep love and passion for politics. I have competed internationally and won internationally debate uh, competitions and in addition I went on TV and talked about and promoted City Youth Council. But more importantly, my philosophy, if I was elected CYCTO Chair, is to do that good isn't good enough and we can always do better for example let's take the ttc the ttc is good sure but it can do a lot better look at beijing new york vancouver tokyo all their subway systems are amazing they have the newest and modern technology yet look at our system it is old and outdated and hasn't done anything in years and there's a simple reason for why that is the reason is is that the ttc has become too political what has happened is that the People have been using the TTC to get their own way, to get media spotlight, and they haven't been looking in the best interest of the TTC. What we need to do is we need to make the TTC an independent public organization, similar to Toronto Hydro. This will give it the authority and the power it needs to make decisions, to actually get something done. To prove my point, let me give you an example. Look at the LRT debate. The original LRT program was supposed to start in 2001. It's 2012, 11 years later, and we haven't done anything. And not to mention the fact that we've spent $50 million on random support, on studies and reports that have got us nowhere closer to the actual result. That is why we need to give authority, we need to start making decisions. Remember that these things will take almost 20 years to build. That means when we're 40, we might finally have a subway system in Scarborough. And really, do you want to live in an environment where you have to drive, where you have to pollute the environment to get around? That is not what I want to believe. And remember, this hurts the poor and the students the most. But you know who else gets, who else suffers from the indecision of City Hall? The environment. The environment is one of the most important aspects of our society completely. And a simple solution is that using LED lights. Right now, we use old, outdated 1970s technology, high pressure sodium lights. Why do we continue to do this? LED lights are more effective. If Toronto were to replace all our lights with LED lights, we would save six million dollars a year, and we would only pollute a fifth of what we did before. This is what's been done in San Antonio, this is what's been done in Los Angeles, and this is what we need to do. But what does this all mean? This means that there are solutions out there to solve old age problems. This also means that we, as a youth, as the young people, we have, the, we have to have the power and the, we have to advocate for these issues. If I am elected your city youth council chair, I will make sure that students are made a force to be reckoned with. That we will not sit by and stand by while politicians play with our lives. That we will make sure that students matter in politics again. And as your city youth council chair, I can't say that I will find all the solutions. I can't say that it will be easier or simple. And I can't even say that anyone will listen. All I can offer is that you will have a strong, confident leader to represent the youth. Toronto. But before I end my speech, I would like to leave you with one last point. People say that the youth 
our future. I disagree. As students, we're here now. We're strong now, and we have to get the job done.
there are 300 of you which are the same as each other. We know that we here today are not much different from anyone else in Toronto. That we are here only as a spokesperson for the youth of Toronto to make sure that they can get what they deserve. We can represent the voice that people need to hear. We can solve the problems of Toronto. As I said before, I am not special, but I am capable. I am capable of helping to build this council from the ground up. With you, we can make this something that we can all be proud of. I wanted to say that we, as of today, are nothing yet. We are an organization that just started. We just have the city hall for the first time ever. But with effort, we can make this into something. I am a joker when the time is right. But when there is a need for seriousness, I will put in all my effort and I will devote myself to become the voice of everyone. I am dedicated, willing, and I know the boundaries that we cannot cross. From knowing almost nothing, as a first year DECA member, I ended up being an international ICDC champion, placing third place amongst international students. From this, you guys would know that I am a responsible leader. I think down to earth. I know what we have to do, and I make sure that everything is reasonable. I'm also a pilot, and that's what I do on my spare time. I have hobbies, much like everyone else here. We must all recognize that we are all different in that respect as well. And because I know that we have to do this, we have to make sure that everyone's interests are put together. I might have to abandon mine, but everyone else's has to be there as well. On top of that, I am compassionate, and having gone through tremendous life experiences, immigration, and moving through four different wards in my life, I hope that I am embodiment of what everyone in Toronto has gone through at some point in their lives. I would like to first start with the first issue that I want to uh, address is immigration, immigrants. Now, when I first came to this country, when I was five, I was poor. Our family had $1,000. I know how it feels like to be poor. I know the struggles that my parents went through. I know how we can help these people make their lives better. Also, I spend three hours on the TTC every single day to go to school and to come back home. I know the issues that all of us face when we are on the TTC. We know that I know the issues and the problems and the solutions that youth have thought of. The TTC is the transportation method for youth. We cannot drive, we cannot afford to drive, but we can drive the TTC. Now, knowing all of that, there are things that this council cannot tackle, but we can try and make it so that we can tackle it. We will build this from the ground up, and I will use all the experience that I can, all the effort that I can, to make this into something that one day we will look back at and one day we can all be proud of. And one day we hope that our children can be a part of as well. Thank you.